Five Live Drive. Yes, it is Five Live Drive with Johnny Ianson and Jeanette Kwachi. A new combo. I mean, it says I'm meant to start talking now, but I'd rather just play that for the next three minutes, if that's OK. Uh, you never need to find an excuse to play The Cure, but this time there's an extra special reason, because we're joined by the band's drummer, Jason Cooper. Evening, Jason. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, thank you. This is great. What a thrill to, to talk to somebody like yourself. Uh, we will talk about The Cure. We'll talk about music in a moment's time. But you're not here just to talk about your tour that you've got coming up and the release of your new album. No. Uh, you are doing something very special indeed. Uh, and it's all to do with the memory of a very special friend of yours. Tell us a bit more about it. Yes, I'm uh, riding the London to Brighton bike ride for the British Heart Foundation uh, in memory of my dear departed uh, drum technician who died of a heart attack. Um, uh, and um, it's in memory of him. It's it's worth talking about the relationship that musicians have with roadies and guitar techs and drum techs and things like that because you are incredibly close to them. They they I guess share some of the most powerful and intimate moments in terms of your professional career you can have. Yeah, we shared lots of moments. I mean, he was just a fabulous man to have around, and he was uh, wonderful to have on stage. I could always depend on him. And he's dearly missed, yes. And so th that's why I'm riding for the BHF. Uh, they hope to raise £2.8 million. Pounds. There's like 14,000 riders. Uh, they spend £100 million pounds a year on research. And uh, it's a very worthy cause. Mm. So tell us a bit about Paul Welton, who's your drum tech, or Ricky. Uh, why, first he called Ricky because he looked like Ricky from EastEnders. <laughs> right. So I bet you weren't at all annoying and whenever you shouted him, just shouted Ricky in a Cockney accent, just like Bianca. Yeah, I did. Of course yeah, you did. Of course you did. <laughs> so, well, I mean, what is the role of a drum tech and, a, 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 and, and someone like Ricky? Uh, he sets up my drums. He's um, there to help me... Um, negotiate uh being in different countries um he's just a good dependable person yeah uh, that's why i missed him yeah, yeah. And, and as you say you're, you're you're writing this in in memory of him because he suffered a, a a heart attack and obviously for the british heart foundation was it unexpected did it come out of nowhere i mean it must have been very very difficult for you he in the became band. Ill in helsinki we were playing a concert there and then uh he came back uh to england and very sadly uh died a week later right yeah and tell me about cycling then. A lot of um, men in a, of a certain age, should I say that, have taken up cycling in, in recent years. Mammals, I think. Mammals, is. I'm glad you said it. So middle-aged men in Lycra. Oh, I mean, dear. I'm not going to ask you to describe what you're wearing right now because that would be slightly weird. Uh, but are uh, you full Lycra, full helmet, full gear? Yeah, I haven't quite got the top. I haven't got the top bit. Yet. I've got the shorts, which is very important. I mean, someone in a bike shop said to me, what should I spend my money on? And he said, the shorts, padded shorts is the most important. Part. Yeah. So this is a conversation that me and the team were having exactly the same thing before I before the show today, because I rode my bike for the first time in two years the day before yesterday. And I rode it a whole three miles downhill into right. Leeds City Centre and I've been walking like John Wayne oh, ever Johnny, since. Oh, Johnny, come on. I mean, they, <laughs> it's a pain, you know, That department, yeah. Yeah, pe department. people say you never forget how to ride a bike, but I forgot about the pain because <laughs> I would not have gone back to it, Jason. You need padded shorts. Yeah, apparently so. Uh, Jason, can I just add, um, my husband um, last week did the Ride London, so 100 miles, okay, yes. bless him. When he came home, I sprayed him with champagne. The man could barely walk, but we were really super proud of what he was able to do. But yeah. um, one bit of advice for you, just make sure you've got your nutrition sorted. So all your waters, all your gels and everything else and just try and enjoy it. But um, yeah, a good, a good bike also helps as well, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, my bike's not bad. It's not as good as some of the people I'm sure that will be on the ride, but it, it, it works. I've had it serviced, so hopefully it won't let me down. How's the training been going? Punctures? Uh, uh, problems like with your bike? Long of the day sort of thing. I'm trying to do that. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing obviously about being a, a, a rock star like yourself is having a very high profile and a great fan base as well and a very very generous fan base by all accounts as well particularly one fan in the US very generous yes he's called Jason and he offered to pay uh, £7,000 for an hour's drum lesson so I'm very grateful to him to wow. the British Art Foundation not to me of course to the, the British Art Foundation yeah I was going to say what do you usually charge uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and 
yes, that will take place after the bike ride. Great. And does he have a personal link to the British Heart Foundation or is he just a massive fan of the band? I think he's a massive fan. Yes, he got in touch with them and just asked if, if he could set that up. And I said, of course, for a, a good cause. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, rock and rollers aren't known for their healthy lifestyle. But I guess as as you get a little bit older and wiser, you realise you do need to sleep. As Jeanette says, you do need to eat properly. You do yeah. need to start looking after yourself. Just When you're a band, though, that's, for instance, about to start a big tour like you are, how does mm. that work? Can you combine a healthy lifestyle with being a rock star? Yeah, you you can. I mean, I find if I don't uh, do a bit of healthy stuff, I I, I uh, don't cope very well with it. I do yoga and swimming, all those things to sort of help, help it along, really. But the but the concert's quite um, long, so yeah, it, it's it's just good to eat enough beforehand. That's what I do usually. Have a big meal. <laughs> How big is big? What kind of calories? What? Three course, <laughs> really. Three course. Well. I just want to have a lie down after that. <laughs> I know, but I, a pasta usually helps. Things like that. Yeah, yeah. Because you've got to. So oh. you're, you're starting your tour in October, aren't you? Which and it's a massive tour. You're going all yeah, over the place. It starts on the sixth in uh, Latvia, um, and we finish in December in at Wembley. Uh, yeah, yeah. Three, oh, three. the thirteenth. Three nights at Wembley Arena, which will be a, yeah. a wonderful thing. And I was thinking, because you were, you headlined Glastonbury 2019, didn't you? Yeah. Was, was that that was the last Glastonbury before the pandemic? Then wasn't it? Yes, that was our last UK show. It was a, a wonderful experience to be there. My family were there. It was a truly magical moment. Yeah, I really. I mean, if there's a sh- if there's a show to to have before the pandemic, the Glastonbury Pyramid stage, there can't be much bigger in terms of a, an artist's career. Yeah, I I, I loved it. I mean, I'm. I, we're going actually back there as a family to uh, camp this year. So we're going to look at some bands. <laughs> to ca- tell, I mean, you're obviously going in some sort of glamping teepee, aren't you? No normal tent. No, Just- come on. Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I like camping, actually. Really? And you're, you're, yeah. you're in with the, the common people, with the proms? Well, sort of. All oh, right, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Are you staying in Michael Evis's back garden and allowed to use his toilet? Is that what it is? Kind of back, yeah, so, somewhere. Well, near there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought as much. And tell me about the new album as well, because it's been, it's been a, a lot of work for the band, by all accounts. Yes. It's, uh, it, the name of it is Songs of a Lost World. Uh, and Robert is mixing it as we speak. Right, okay. Uh, can, you, can you tell us anything more? I know uh, you've been quite tight-lipped about it. Does it, uh, does it touch on things like the pandemic? Um, uh, yes, possibly. Okay. I'm not quite sure, really, to be honest. Um, I mean, musically, it does. It's, um, it, yeah, I think they're more kind of slower songs. Um, uh, yeah, I mean... Lyrically, uh, I'm not. I'm not so sure. Right, interesting. So, and is Robert Smith a cyclist as well? He does do some. Yes, he? I, I think at his home on a on a you know stationary bike. Right. Okay. Bit. Yeah, because I couldn't see a helmet fitting over Robert's hair. It's a. It's a. Quite, he doesn't wear a helmet. It's he, good. He, he never make hair. Yeah. Yes, it's quite the bouffant that he has there. It's a wonderful thing. Um, like mine. Yeah. yeah, and and tell me in terms of obviously a band which you've been going now, I'm guessing for, it must be forty years now, is it? Uh, over forty years. Over yeah. forty years. The year anniversary in two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Right. Okay. So so forty four years now. How have you found the evolution of the band? Because there are obviously there are those who will love the original stuff and the early stuff of the Cure, and you know we've just played a bit of it then. As artists, you always want to evolve and progress and change, don't you? And I guess there's nothing worse than continually referring back to your old self when you change as a person and as a, as a musician. So have you found that kind of cycle of evolution difficult to keep everybody happy? Difficult as in the fans? I mean, I, yeah. I, we just sort of uh, write music to be as good as we can, really. Um, I don't know if we think so much about what has come before or what's going to come after. It's just to produce great music. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and tell me then more about this race. If people want to, it's not a race, obviously. It's definitely not a race. The ride itself. If people want to support you in this, how do they do that? Tell us about your Just they Giving page. Go to my Just Giving page, uh, Jason Cooper on the BHF. Uh, there's lots of spaces still to apply for the ride. Um, and uh, yes, it's a very worthy call. So please join if you can. Yeah, and you and obviously you will have people around you as well. I guess the community aspect of a big event like this 
is a really important celebratory point of it. Yes, absolutely. And I've got a team with me, uh, two friends of mine, Ricard, Nikos. They're keen cyclists, so they'll set a good pace. Right. Uh, but I think there's all kinds of abilities that are, are entering. So I think whatever your ability, um, you're welcome to, to join the race. So yeah. Jason, are you competitive? Are you, are you, are you, are you ah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Because sometimes you go into these races with your friends and you're like, right, we're going to work as a pack. And maybe in the last mile or so, you just see someone go rogue and they're off. Is that going to be you? That's what I'm asking. I don't know if I'll go rogue. I'm go, I go quite slow up the hills, but like <laughs> my teammates set a really good pace. So, and sometimes if I get in their slipstream, uh, that's like 30%. Uh, of my energy is saved by being in their slipstream. So Brilliant. I think I'll stick with that. That's fantastic. <laughs> Jeanette, you as a, as a an Olympic sprinter, oh gosh, I mean, you were all about the explosive pace. So yeah. I'm just thinking, can you give Jason any tips here? Yeah, the only tips for the big yeah, finish. Honestly, Jason, the only tips that you need from me for the finish is just put your head down and just absolutely go for it. Whatever you've got left, take it to the finish line. But when it comes down to endurance events, I am the last person that you should be asking for any advice from. My husband tries to get me involved on the bike and a spin bike is as far as I will go which doesn't move and I can listen to music and I feel good but the great outdoors on a bike um, I'm afraid uh, that's that's where I kind of fall down a little bit that's yeah. not really my Jeanette doesn't expertise. like to work for more than 11 and no, a half seconds, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so a bike yeah, ride to Brighton wouldn't be great <laughs> The Jason. worst part of the race is, is getting to the end. I think Ditchling Beacon is a difficult thing at the end. It's, yes. it's a big hill. Yeah. So that's what I'm sort of... Hey, what, what, by the way, speaking of music, do you listen when you ride? I know there's, there are kind of safety issues, yeah, but when you're, hard, when, when you're trained to, or when you're doing any other sort of training, do you listen to music? No, I don't, actually. Yeah. I don't. Mm. Uh, I like to sort of be able to hear cars coming behind me. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, of course. But you don't do any other supplementary training with it either? Uh, um, I do. Yes, I do a bit of rowing, actually, to be mm. honest. Okay, right. Uh, yeah. And any anything else I can do, really. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I, I just wonder what it's like for the rest of your band then. So you said that Robert Smith, the lead singer, does like to get on a static bike. Are you the annoying one that's evangelising being healthy, getting out in your exercise, <laughs> turning well, up in your Lycra and all that kind no, of stuff? Everyone else is very healthy in the band. Simon uh, is a particularly good cyclist. Right. Um, and yes, he, he does lots of cycling. Yeah. But he's done this race a few times before, so uh, he's doing his other charity events. But um, yes, everyone else is reasonably healthy. Yeah, yeah. well, I guess you have to, because you, you have a, a reputation for doing very long gigs, don't you? Um, we do. You know, kind of Springsteen-esque three-hour long gigs. Is, is that a thing that will change at all? Or will that the, your new found cycling fitness help you in maybe going for the four-hour one? I hope so. I mean, I think that we, we, we will do some long ones, but uh, I don't think we'll do... We did one once for four hours 13. I don't think we'll repeat that. One. Really? Oof. I mean, that must it, have gosh. been your entire back catalogue. Four hours and 13? Yeah. Oh, my that, goodness. Uh, uh, on uh, Robert's birthday, actually, uh, in, in 2013. Yeah. If you're drumming for that amount of time, James, that is fit. Yes, yeah, so I hope you the bike ride should be... A yeah. Yeah, I mean I'd be demanding some a cappella numbers in that if you're <laughs> if you're drumming. a four, a My four hour one. Absolutely not. Some wow. of the rhythms are easier than others. Yeah. Right, okay. Oh brilliant. Yeah, a, a four hour paradiddle is just too much. Listen, Jason, it's been it's been a thrill to talk to you. Thank you ever so much. Um thank you for coming on. Thank, thank you, you for sharing that with us. When's the album out, by the way? It's out uh, in October. Right. It's out in October. And then the tour begins in, re where did we say? Riga? It's Riga, uh, it's isn't it? Yeah, yeah Riga oh, in Latvia, 6th of October. Yeah. 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 And then all around Scandinavia, rest of Europe, and then back into the UK uh, for the, I think it's the f uh, Dublin gig. There we go. Uh, or in Ireland, sorry. Dublin on the 1st of December, Belfast on the 2nd, Glasgow on the 4th, and then into the rest of England from the 6th as well. Wonderful stuff. Take care. Thank you very much, Jason. Enjoy Thank the you. cycle ride and enjoy the gigs. Thank you. All right, take care.